I want to read a couple of verses, actually not a couple, 27 verses. See, when you say a couple, a couple could mean two. But I want to read 27 verses. And I want you to look at the screen if you can, so that you can follow me. Le reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua, chapter number 6, verse 1 to 27. Amen. And if you, if you like it, you can join me to read. You know, as you read, they told us, as you read, you also have some way of understanding so that we can have an understanding as we share uh, what we are sharing this morning. And we are talking about being able to bring down the walls, those walls, because each one of us have walls that we need God to give us the grace to bring them down. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. I think you need to underline that. That's very powerful. Verse number two. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hands, its kings and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war, you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going round it once, then they came, they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests bearing seven uh, trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priest blew the, tr blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all who are with her in the house, because she heard the messengers that were sent. And you, by all means, abstain from their cast things, lest you become a cast when you take off their cast things and make the camp of Israel a cast and trouble it. 
But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went into the city, every mind straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, go into the Harlot's house and from there bring out the woman and all that she has as you saw to her. And the young men who had, who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and led them outside the camp of Israel. But they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put in the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household, and all that she heard. So she dwelt in Israel to this day because she heard the messengers when Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Then Joshua charged them at that time saying, Cast be the men before the Lord who raises up and builds this city Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn and with his youngest. He shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame spread throughout the land. And that is the word of the Lord. You know, if you came from where some of us came, you would have responded. But we bless the name of the Lord. This, this is a continuation of what we, we have been sharing. And today we are saying overcoming our walled cities. Walled city. The ancient city of Jericho was a very well built up city. Walled city. The historians tell us it was surrounded by two massive stone walls. The outer wall was six feet thick and 20 feet high. The inner wall was 12 feet thick and 30 feet high. There was a 15 feet guarded walkway between these two walls where the military would walk around. So in other words, the wall that Rahab house was was in the inner one and it was higher than the other one. But on top of it, military army would go over it because it is quite wide uh, in terms of thickness. The wall city of Jericho stood as a, two things. One as physical and the other, the other one was psychological. It is a scare. It is huge. It, is an, uh, it was an obstacle between the people of Israel and them. But you see, God had promised that this city was going to be Israel's. So before they could move deeper into Canaan, God was trying them with this walled city, with this obstacle, both psychological and physical war, what they were going to do with it. So the Asian city, between there, them, to get into what God has promised them, they had to deal with the Jericho. And if we had the time, we would look at the prophecy. Because the prophecy that whoever will build again, rebuild the city, will pay a price with his first and last. What a prophecy. And it came to pass, that prophecy came to pass. So as we consider the pivotal movement in Israel's history, we can find the help we need to overcome our own strongholds. Notice with me the lessons that are presented here in the passage that we have read. Overcoming our strongholds. Number one that I find here is there is a lesson about 
supremacy. You remember where we finished? When we were finishing, we looked at um, Joshua 5, verse 13 to 15. There is a lesson about supremacy. And I realized, as we looked at those verses last week, there have been so much in it that we need to recapture. Again, we, we want to conquer, but we need to go back so that we don't miss it. First of all, in that supremacy, there is a person. There is a supreme person. The individual that Joshua meets outside the walls of Jericho identifies himself as the captain of the host of the Lord. This nothing less than the personal pre-Bethlehem manifestation and the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Joshua comes face to face with Jesus Christ. This speaks for us really the matter of salvation. Before we can ever, ever enjoy victory in our journey, we must first commence our journey by giving our lives to Jesus so he becomes both Lord and Savior. And it so happened to Joshua. Joshua meet the men. And my prayer is that there is a man. We need to meet the man, the Savior. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because once we meet him, our theology is going to change. Our focus is going to change. And we will know for sure. It will go down in our hearts that the battle belongs to him. The second thing about the supreme person, we see the supreme position that this man is. The captain of the Lord holds. The Bible says his sword was up ready for war. He was holding the, the sword for war even when Joshua was going around Jericho. He was ready. He has been ready. He is around you. He is ready. He has a sword ready for war. My prayer is that God help me to, that my eyes of understanding can be opened up. You know, when I gave you the story here not long ago of these two guys that were on the, on, on the, on the seashore and a ship disappeared on the horizon and one said, oh, it has disappeared. And the other one said, no, it hasn't. It is our focus. The minute you know that your focus is limited, then you will know the promises of God are true whether I can see them or not. It is critical for me to know I don't have to know there is a heaven. All what I need is to know there is a savior. And where the savior is, then that is my heaven. I will not struggle what happens. I will wait because it is not in my horizon that I cannot see far. And Paul says, oh, I pray that you will open the eyes of their understanding. If my eyes of my understanding are open up, then I will know. Joshua opens his eyes and he meets there is a guy there. He hadn't seen him, but the guy was there. What was the guy doing? He was ready for war. God is ready to fight your battles. I know you have been on your knees, but God wants to, to fight those battles for you. Number three, what Joshua discovers is there is a supreme power. Supreme power. And he's asking him, are you for us? <laughs> or, or for them? And the guy says, no, I am not for either. And we said these two things, that what he was trying to tell Joshua, I cannot be for you or against, because I am taking over. Don't allow yourself to fight battles that you cannot win. Allow him to take over. Oh, allow him to take over. I don't know what is that thing that I've been struggling you, but I tell you the secret is to allow the Lord to take over. I have great wars, but these wars have to come down. How will they come down? Because I want to allow the, the Lord of hosts, of God's host, to take over. These two events, they speak to us on matter of surrender. That when Joshua sees this man, there is something that he does. He puts everything down. Actually, we read and we said he removed the shoes. Toa kiatu. Iyo ni kusama, mimi siwezi. 
akatoa kiatu and you know the story is also repeated in the book of uh, Ruth if you go back to the book of Ruth you discover when Boaz is trying to get this uh, lady called Ruth he called the relatives the one who was supposed to do it when he couldn't he removed the shoes my prayer and we removed the shoes the other day here please keep it removed ama urudisha keep it removed no i can see urudisha but let it be that in your spirit that i'm not having it sina kiatu why because i want to trust god to win this battle for me in the name of the lord joshua he is told by this man i don't come to take sides i come to take over may the lord take over over my issues and over your issues because if he does then you can be guaranteed the battle the lord is going to win the battle for us i can't but you can take over that's what we find in the book of ruth 4 verse 68 there are some in this sanctuary today and up in the tent and on the corridor over there that have been trying to fight their own battles with their own power just and as they do they get they get on being beaten one battle after the other and we all need to draw off our shoes and put it out and say to the lord lord i cannot fight these battles but you can i cannot win the victories i need you to win them for me blessed be the name of the lord so we find the first thing that we need to do is going back to chapter number 5 so that we can understand the supremacy of god the supremacy of god the second lesson that we find now is between verse 1 and 5 of chapter 6 and this is the lesson about submission submission it, it is a second major path towards spiritual victory over the strongholds of life our life demand our life demand because there are so many things that this life is demanding and as i seek to go towards the victory i need to have confidence in the lord and there are three areas in which joshua displayed absolute submission this this also needs to be true for us verse one and two if you can give it to us to read it now jericho was securely shut up because of the children of israel none went out and none came in verse number two and the lord said to joshua see i have given jericho into your hands its kings and the mighty men of valor the first thing that i find that joshua is trying to say he was going to be submissive to god's promise what was god's promise see i have already given to you these guys cannot come in they cannot come out actually nobody was bothering joshua because they were already afraid nobody was coming in nobody was going in these guys were already they were already beaten up you remember that what rahab was telling them we when we had over 40 years ago we have been waiting mumekaa wapi mumekuwa wapi si muje kujeni mtu chukue tu you know i don't know whether atikujeni tu mtu uraga ko ukai mogure you know it is like some of those plots are saying to you mumekuwa wapi si mkuje anyway i know mtu wa mashamba anaongea habari ya mashamba but joshua was ready to submit himself for god's promises so before joshua goes to the battle against the city of Jericho, he is reminded of the Lord's promises to give Israel the victory. The victory was already promised. Can you give us Joshua 2 and verse 9? Joshua 2 and verse 9. And say to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and all that the inhabitants of the land are faith, faint hearted because of you already joshua ah jama they are waiting for you they are already waiting for you so there is a past promise there is also a present promise in other words what god has said he will do to you in the past he is also echoing it now he's going to do it for you in joshua 6 and verse number 2 where we have read he is trying to tell them see i have given you now jericho is in your hand 
And I pray that God can help my eyes to open up, see the promise that was promised. Then, here I am, God wants to give it to me. He wants to give it to me and I can take it in the name of the Lord. The past promises remind Joshua of what the Lord had said he would do long ago because Rahab had known about these promises 40 years. The present promise reminded Joshua that the Lord had not changed his mind about the matter. God is still planning. He has still intended to give you victory and to give me victory. And you know, sometimes we find ourselves in places we wonder, God, where have you been? I have been waiting for you. I have not seen you. You know, we, we behave like um, Gideon. You tell us I'm a mighty man of valor. Wow. Wow. And who are you? Wow. Where are you? Wow. You are still God, even when we are beaten like this? Wow. You know, he's so amused about this God. He said, okay, okay, I, I, mighty man of Allah, okay, okay. And then he tries him. You see, some of us are like, just like Gideon. Uliniahidi, he's telling you now, I want to give you the land. Where have you been? Oh God, are you this? God has promised victory. He has not changed about his promises. It will still come to pass. You know, one friend of mine went to the embassy uh, seven times, embassy of America. And every time, sorry, we cannot give you the visa. Seven. But this guy was this guy that never give up. On the seventh time, he was told, go and wait. We, we will call you. That is what he, wait, he wanted to wait. Because as you wait for them to call you, what are you going to tell the Lord? They said it. May their words ensnare them. And they had to call him. They called him. When he went, he thought he would be interviewed. You are the same man. You have come here seven times. You want to go to the U.S. Which part do you want to go? And a stamp, pop. There are some of you, you have gone three times only. Oh, my goodness. Go again. Change the suit. If you are wearing a black one, wear the brown one now this time. I'm a very shati kamayangu. Si shati poe kamaye. Yes. Uvai shati kamayangu poe tu. Wende tu. Yani ile ya haina matching ni broken kila kitu. Suruari ni broken, shati ni broken. Si suit. I also have another one. We went with him to get the visa in America. When visa was being picked, you'd go akukuwa na malaini, unaenda to Moy Avenue pale mwisho, bomb blast. Can I go to America? You say, yes. Unaingia ndani. Unapeana passport. Wanakuuliza maswali matache tu wanakupatia, lakini mi nilienda ni kanyimwa. Jamaa mwingine ya linyimwa na hakapigua kerele. You will never go to America. Naya kasema, I will in Jesus' name. He's a bishop. I know him. And I thought he will never. But you know what? He was number three to the governor who won California. I saw his name. So I asked my friend, Kwani Alienda? Eh, Alienda? In Jesus' name. <laughs> the battle is not mine. It belongs to God. And many, many other stories of what God can do. There is that supremacy. And what Joshua is doing, he wants to submit himself, first of all, to the promises that are past, and now the promise that has been promises, promised to him. Secondly, in verse 3 to 5, he was submissive to God's pl plan. If, we, if you can read at your own time, verse 3 to 5. On the service, God's plan for Israel's victory seemed really strange. After all, what was really required of Israel to bring the walls of Jericho down? Nothing. Isn't it? If you think about it, what were they going to do? Nothing. Nothing. And I'm telling you there are some battles that you are fighting and all what you need to do is nothing. Don't sweat. Keep on waiting on God. 
the victory is yours. So you can, you can say there was the, the, actually nothing. When you get right down to it, all they had to do was to follow God's plan and the walls would fall down flat. So what is Joshua supposed to do? Only to submit into the plan of God. There is a plan for you. Just like we said, the children, have, God has a plan for them. God has a plan for you and a plan for me. All what is asking me and you, it is to submit to that plan of God. And it will come to pass. War cities like Jericho are many. You have some. I have some. But they need to come down. They need to come down. Now, what listening to the, to the plan that Joshua had, you, you, you say it is, it is really ridiculous. But remember, when Joshua saw the, 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 the servant of the Lord, or Jesus himself in incarnation with a sword, he fell down and worshipped. He removed his shoes. He said, now I don't want to say the plan I had for Jericho. I don't know what plan he had for Jericho. But he's like, from that point on, no plan. Then he hears what he's told. Joshua, this is what I want you to do. A, B, C, D. I want you to do this, to do this, to do this. And Joshua says, yes, sir. That's all. We need to look at this very closely. They were to take seven priests. Seven, not more. The rest, Nikirinde, seven. And seven is the biblical number of completion or fullness. So what God is telling Joshua, carry a number of completion. You have already won it. Seven, let them go before you. And priests are a picture of an advocate or one who stood between man and God. And this is a picture of complete or perfect advocate. And his name is Jesus Christ. He's our advocate. And as we, we come against strongholds in our life, he is making intercession for us even now on the throne of God. Number two, they were to take seven rams horn trumpets. The ram was a picture of atonement. Remember when Abraham took Isaac to Mount Moriah, to put him to death. It was a ram that provided the atoning, redeeming price for Isaac. So we need a full or perfect atonement, and we can find it, and we have already have it, because of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has become our atonement. The seven ram's horn. Number three, what were they supposed to do? You know, he's submitting himself to God's plan. They want to take the Ark of the Covenant. And I love this. And I have always told people, you know, when you carry the Ark, you are saying the presence of the Lord. It is the presence of the Lord. So in other words, he, they are submitting to the presence of the Lord. The Ark represents the Lord Jesus Christ in all his fullness. The Ark, in the Ark was a golden pot of manna, meaning God provides there is God's full provision. There is also Aaron's budding rod was in there. This speaks of Christ's power and his life. He is able to do much more than we even think or even imagine. The presence of the Lord. There is a battle that you are battling. There is a battle that you are battling. If I'm going to win the ark, the law of the Lord, the ways of the Lord, I have to submit myself to it. Number four, they were simply to take these things and walk with them around the city. Take them and walk around the city. Now I like imagining. I like imagining. If, if, if Kenya army is fighting with another country and Kenya army has all the tanks and all the guns and then this other army carries trumpets and some priests. The Ark of the Covenant. And some guys for war. And what the priests are doing, they are blowing the trumpet. The other guys are not saying anything. What would you think? 
kama kuna watu wamerukwa na akili ni hawa vita ni kupambana so when they saw them the first day i think the next day they said <laughs> wale watu tulikuwa tumegoja hata wana kichaa hata hawajui vile wanafanya tuendelee na biashara zetu hapa hata hawa ndio tulikuwa tukigoja eh hawa hawa hawana kitu but because they were obeying there is a point here that i want to pick god has told you something and you are walking and you are not supposed to talk humanly i'm just saying humanly and then somebody says jinga how are you going to respond mimi wacha mimi si mjinga nimeambiwa na mungu now that is what i would have imagined they did but they did not talk wanaitwa jinga mwenye wazimu watu ambao hawajui wanalia tunasikia ni kulia tu wanalia wakienda kanisa ni kulia tu wanalia kwani huyu Mungu wao asikiri huruma you know people will talk about it but you know obedience is simply saying i'm not going to respond to anyone sitaolewa sawa sitapata mtoto sawa sitapata kazi sawa watoto wangu hawata nawiri sawa lakini mimi nitaendelea kunyamaza because i have the ark of the covenant i'm following a one that is a winner and his promises are true Now I'm talking to someone here. Hata kwako nyumbani. The minute your spouse says something, how do you react? Even with a promise. Si ni kukansa wengine mtu na cancel. We, we normally shout and cancel it. May God help us. He was he he did submit. But he also we see him, he also became submissive to God's power. Israel was about to learn the truth that victory was in the Lord and in not in themselves. Aren't you not tired of trying to live your Christian life and every day you try you fall you fail you fail you fail. Then we need to stop trying and give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. We start trusting him because we know he's going to give us victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Finally, There is a lesson about success. Success. Because success is going to come verse 6 to 15. Because success number one, involved determination. They simply did God's way. They might have been tempted to fight after all. The people of Jericho were terrified after all. They are not coming in or out we go fight them. The gates of hell shall not prevail again. Let's go fight them. They should have done that but no. They said no. Let's obey the law. Let's do it God's way. When you do it God's way, there will always be victory. But when you do your own way, you will always fail. We need to learn that. When life does not make sense, just walk. When others quit, just walk. When someone to want to fight, just walk. When some come up with a new method, just walk. You see obtaining the victory in God's business we have to obey God not our own thinking. Now that is where the rubber touches the road. Because you unaona na unafikiria unajua. He will give us strength. Isaiah 40 verse 31. This is have been our theme. You see because it says this those that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength right but then what comes in is amazing they shall mount up with wings it starts with what is almost impossible hakuna ati kwanza tutembee kidogo alafu tukimbie alafu tupae hakuna ili iwe ni mungu unapaa kwanza hapo hapo unyiti Yaani si kwanza unafanya practice ili upae hata ndege si ana ndege yao wakubwa si unaonaga anafanya kidogo kukimbia kidogo ama mbata na nguso wanafanyaga hivyo kukimbia but what god is saying no you start up then you come down to walk and run that's a promise but 
is a promise, but sometimes it's very hard to hold on to that promise and believe into that promise. So determination. Number two, success involved dedication, verse 16 to 20. Israel walked around the city six days, and when they did, what happened to the walls of the city? Nothing. When they walked around that city six times on the seventh day, what happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Why? Often, the number of six in the Bible represents man. Oh! All what they did for six days was man's effort. Man, six days, man was created. Nothing happened. Nothing. Man can try as hard as he pleases in his own power and he will never obtain victory. But when Israel marched around the wall the seventh time and shouted, the wall fell down flat because seven is the number of completion. Oh, it is complete. The Bible says it is finished. Jesus said it. It is done. It is the point. It is at that point when shouting caused the walls to tumble down. Then I ask myself, this is my Ile swali unaulizaga. Huyo huyo jamaa huyo jamaa Joshua alimuona alikuwa akifanya nini? Hilo ni swali najiuliza. Joshua alienda akifikiria yeye ni, ni shepherd mtu mzuri sana anaenda kuchora vile watapigana vita na akachora chora lakini akiwa kwa mbigo akaona kuna jamaa mwingine huyo jamaa alikuwa afanya nini you know i like to speculate already the walls zilikuwa zimetengenezwa na huyo jamaa huyo jamaa alikuwa ameziweka tayari <laughs> zilikuwa zinagoja to shout you know there are some demons that will not go speak english or speak your kikuyu, they will not go. All they are waiting for is a shout. Now the problem is, which shout? Utapiga nduru gani? Unajua kuna wengine ukapiga piga nduru? Maiga gabu. Have you known the difference? Yeah, and you tell them, piga ni nduru. Wakikuyu, muka higa abu. You know what a boo is? Boo is that shout you, you make? What you can? Because you are under siege. Oh, may I know what kind of a shout I'm going to shout? <laughs> we, we were someone with some of you, and the preacher preached a very powerful sermon. With this. some of you can still remember in my. My, my, my late brother-in-law's um, Mashakaya. He said, Ukiwa na shida, unaitaka nani? And I thought it was very funny. One of my friends, she was, she was a very interesting girl. Every t if, she would have, if she would have any danger, she would say something that I have never known what it is, and you can help me. She would say, Kasudu, what is it? I'm trying to say there are some of you, whatever you say, even yourself, you have no clue what you're saying. <laughs> May my shout have a meaning. Because if my shout have a meaning, the walls before me will come down. But if I'm, boo I'm booing, I will keep on booing and I will sweat and then nothing will happen. But there is a shout. Friends, there is a shout. The Lord has given me a promise. The Lord has been on my side. The Lord is telling me I'm a winner. The Lord has sent his... Oh my goodness. The kind of shout. Oh my goodness. I want to say this. The third point in verse 21. Success involves death. There must be something that is going to die. I'm telling you. Success meant those guys in the camp had to die. All of them. Of course. Where God, are you fair? Remember, they are the ones that asked for it. They are not surrendering. 
they are still wamejifungia wakabomokewa success will involve after the walls fell down the Israelites went into Jericho and killed everything that lived with the exception of Rahab and her family blessed be the name of the lord the problem with the Jericho city it is not the building that had a problem it is the people and god wanted to deal with the people He wanted to deal with the people. Remember the story in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, 32 to 33. The story, let me read it to you. Then said Samuel, bring hither to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Here. So Agag came to him cautiously, and Agag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel, whoosh, it is the people. There are some situations you have to kill them. You have to rise up and kill some of these things that have built walls around you, whether it is fear, intimidation, lack of focus, lack of prayer, all those things. You have to wake up. They have terrorized you for long enough. Declare war. Declare war. Declare war. Victory is ours. But we have to take it God's way. They shouted. When we, when we played with Manchester the other day, <laughs> although I never watched, si wachagi kulala, nilipata maripoti badai. I want to believe those guys who are in the field, he shouted for victory. But it was not to move. It was shout for victory. Are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout? Because I think we need to shout. I want you to shout the victory of the Lord. And you know, some of those demons will go when we shout. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. All right. All oh, what I want you to say, it, it is to, just to say, Jesus. Only that. Victory in the name of? Jesus. Healing in the name of? Jesus. Provision in the name of? Jesus. Warriors come down in the name of? Jesus. Let's give the Lord praise.